Hello, I'm here with my colleague Brad Young, and we have been exploring the landscapes of catastrophe for well over two decades now. And one of the things that we've been very interested in is the great floods that have swept over North America from time to time, mostly concentrated at the end of the last ice age. One of these great floods was called the Bonneville Flood, named after Lake Bonneville in Utah, which was a giant lake that existed during the latter stages of the Ice Age, during the what would, we would call the Late Quaternary, that formed on several occasions and then disappeared. The modern Great Salt Lake is a remnant of the Great uh, Lake Bonneville. Here, forming this train of rocks, is on this, uh, on this bar, which is right where this arrow is pointing. So those rocks are right here. So you can see, actually, that the water came down and through this channel, uh, very highly erosive, probably moving at 50 miles an hour, something like that. It was also flowing over the top here, and that's what created these cataracts that you see right. here. Um, so you can see there's a channel right here that was a distributory where it flowed off. But initially, what you've got a picture is that this water is flowing over this landscape then the water becomes focused into the channels and then it becomes extremely erosive and rapidly then can erode the floor of the channel down and that's that's what happened right here and that's when this distributory uh, became isolated mm -hmm. and again this is a state park that people can go visit and yes. it's right off the interstate there interstate 86 and uh you know they, they can get an up close view yes of, of what what this flood's power really was right through right. this area of the snake river a really awesome road trip, which we've done now, is to basically start in the basin of Lake Bonneville and follow the pathway of the flood. Um, we should do it again. We should do it again. Yeah, absolutely. Of course, when you get to the southern end of uh, Hell's Canyon, you've got to stop there and basically <laughs> take a boat through the canyon because uh -huh, there's yeah. no highway. Yeah, jump there. on the raft. But you can pick up the highway again at the northern end of uh, Hell's Canyon, just below Lewiston and Clarkston there. Right. And this is the kind of things you'll see that really is a testament to the unbelievable power of this flood. These were two boulders entrained within the flowing water. They undoubtedly weren't transported that far or they would have quickly uh, broken apart into smaller materials, but nonetheless they were carried in the water and dropped right here. Um, so you can really get a sense that, that you know, a, a river or, you know, a flood that could transport uh, boulders of that size had to be a pretty power, powerful. Serious event. power. Serious power, yeah. And this is looking down into the modern day Snake River Canyon. It's, I don't think anybody really knows what the pre-flood depth of the canyon was, but it had to have been considerably shallower than the, than the modern day. And I'm guessing that there probably was a shallow river channel flowing across the Snake River Plain that ultimately became exploited by the, the Bonneville floodwaters. Sure. Uh, but this canyon right here is about 400 feet deep from the rim of the cliff down to the, to the river surface. And that's just below Shoshone Falls? This one is, I don't remember if this is just below Shoshone Falls. I think this is actually Above pretty, pretty, I'm pretty sure the falls is right on that side. Okay, well then, yeah, you're probably right. So Shoshone Falls is on the Snake River, about four miles northeast of the city of Twin Falls, near the midpoint of a chaotically eroded 14-mile section of the Snake River Canyon. Shoshone Falls was an important landmark in the geological exploration of the West, but evidence that the falls are a relic of a great place to see flood has been recognized only recently. As now understood, Shoshone Falls and its associated erosional features were formed at a time of catastrophic outflow from Lake Bonneville about 15,000 years ago. And again, that's Malday writing again uh, after his uh, seminal paper of 1968. This is 1987, 19 years later. And this is a photograph of Shoshone Falls. What happens is that the waters of the flood come through, they will pluck rocks. And as the water flows over the rim, it'll continue to pluck rocks. 
and erode material. And so what it does is it erodes, creates a cataract, and then as the water flows over, it eats the cataract upstream uh, and will continue to do so until the water, the force of the water declines to the level which can, can no longer uh, quarry the rocks or the flood ceases altogether. So that's what we have here. We have the relic or the remnant of a cataract feature, which is usually a horseshoe shape, okay. which has to do with uh, the hydrological characteristics of water flow, which we can talk about in another video. So as it says here, Shoshone Falls is at the junction of two channels of the Bonneville Flood, one along the narrow Snake River Canyon and the other on the upland a few miles north. Where the channels joined, flood erosion produced a chaotically eroded landscape of cataracts, spillway alcoves, and scab lands, and the original canyon was greatly enlarged. Now this is Maldi's 1987 paper where he's assuming that, that the scale of the canyon was uh, dramatically enlarged by the flood. The main cataracts begin 2.5 miles above Shoshone Falls where the canyon is 230 feet deep. These cataracts called the Twin Falls plunge 157 feet from basalt to massive outcrops of silicic volcanic rocks in the lower story of the canyon. The snake then drops another 212 feet to the threshold of Pillar Falls, 1.5 miles downstream. Pillar Falls, although only 20 feet high, is surrounded by scabland crags, crags that reach 175 feet. And here we can see in this topographic relief map, we see Shoshone Falls is right here in this chaotically uh, this chaotic landscape that he's talking about is all through here. And we can see um, right here is Box Canyon Alcove. So this was where an upland or overland water flow uh, re-entered the Snake River Canyon, leaving a cataract here. We've got another one up here, the Devil's Corral, as it's called. Shoshone Falls is right here. Um, down here we have Blue Lakes Alcove right here, which again is indication of another upland flow returning to the main channel and in the process eating out this alcove or cataract feature right here. So that does that does show that canyon. If we were here at Shoshone Falls, you had the falls that way and then looking the other direction was down that canyon. So yeah, that was that, that, was that, that, right. was that photograph right there we go. that, that direction. Was the picture right there just below the falls, right. We actually, I don't know if you remember, we went swimming in Dirk Slate. Dirk Slate, yep. Um, surprisingly cold. Again, another park. Excellent weekend road trip. Yes. People get out and see this stuff. So if you live in this area and you've uh, seen this video, yeah, we would like to encourage you to get on out. And you may have seen some of this already, um, but maybe this will give you a little bit more in-depth understanding of what you're looking at. Here's a, uh, a closer up, more detailed uh, map of the falls area. Here's Shoshone Falls is right in here, and this is what they're talking about, this chaotic scabland type landscape. And you see there's a lot of these little water bodies here. They occupy scour holes that were created by the turbulence within the water as it flowed over here. You see a distributory channel right here. Almost this, at one point, was probably an island within the flood. Mm -hmm. You can really see here the Devil's Corral is uh, formed by the upland flow coming this way and again there's a, a body of water here that would have been as the water uh, focuses through here it would become very swift and very turbulent and that rapidly can eat into the bedrock. Box Canyon over here again that was a re-entrant from from an overland flow. Echo Lake you can see right here here's a channel that was cut by a flow coming in from the south side of the present day canyon. You see this elongated lake right there Echo Lake, which again is a, occupying a, uh, an erosional trough that was created by the turbulent waters. And here's Twin Falls at low water. You can actually go online and there are some nice pictures on there of Twin Falls at high water, when basically the falls is, is over most of this area right here. During the peak of the Bonneville flood, of course this whole this whole uh, channel here was, was brim full, actually more than brim full. And you can see from this picture, you can kind of begin to see the horseshoe shape here, which is so common 
Um, and that's basically just because of the fact that when you have a water flow, the water in the middle of the flow is moving faster than it is on the, sure. the margins. And so the faster water flow eats and erodes the center of the channel faster than the sides, the flanks, and therefore ends up creating this horseshoe shaped. That U horseshoe. Yes. And this is a view into Snake River Canyon near Twin Falls. The canyon as it exists today is largely a product of the Bonneville Cataclysm, which here filled the canyon and completely overtopped the brim. Now, in the latter stages of the flood, the water would have drained off the uplands and would have been confined to the channel itself. This is near the, uh, is it the Prime Bridge? That's what I was going to say, yes. Yeah, so there's a pull-off here. There's a beautiful bridge that goes across the canyon here. And I think they don't, they right. don't steal Arch Bridge. Don't they do bungee jumping and things off that right. bridge? Yeah. There you go. There we go, the Prime Bridge. So yeah, this, this last picture was taken uh, near the side of the Prime Bridge, which you see right here. Yeah, I think that's, that's you right there. Yeah, that's me right there. <laughs> Undoubtedly. Well, that was just before I dove from here down into the, into the river. 